One of the type of apps that I like to build quite often is .NET console apps. And one of the things that I like to be able to do when building apps is actually debug them. I know that's not something that everybody <laughs> puts in as part of their workflow. Um, or I guess everyone probably does debug things, but not everybody probably uses a debugger. They may just use print statements or console write lines. Um, but in my case, I really like to be able to actually attach a debugger to my program and actually step through things. It just makes me much more efficient at figuring out what's going wrong. So uh, I recently made the switch from using VS Code to um, do a lot of my coding and programming to NeoVim. And so I'm kind of figuring out all these, all these things about how to do what I used to do in VS Code, but do it now in NeoVim. So this is uh, something I recently figured out and I wanted to share. So um, I'm gonna show you this just small sample program I have set up. Um, it's nothing complex, it's uh, very contrived, but it's the point is to illustrate um, what I wanna show you. So it's just a simple uh, console program and all it does is it takes a single command line argument um, that indicates a particular website that I wanna open up and then it starts a, starts a process and actually opens that website in the default browser of my computer. Um, so what I would normally do if I wanted to debug this in VS Code, so let me hop over to VS Code and I'll show you. Um, what I would normally do this to debug what I would normally do to debug this in VS Code is I would have a launch.json file. And in this launch.json file, I'd obviously have just a basic configuration, right? Specifying my console program as the program I want to debug. Um, and then I would also define some, uh, some inputs um, in my launch.json file. So in this case, I'm just defining a singular input that is the arguments, and it's gonna be of type prompt string. And then I'm gonna pass those arguments in as the args into my debug configuration. So with this set up, what I can do in VS Code now is I can actually set a breakpoint on console.write line. And when I actually start the debugger, it's gonna ask me to actually put in some arguments. So in this case, let me just go ahead and put in news. And so what should happen now is I should actually hit this console.write line and the program should take into account that argument that I passed, which in this case was the news argument, so it opens Google News. Uh, but you can see I've hit that breakpoint. I can see my arguments here. I can see the process that I started. And so that's the basic workflow that I follow when I need to debug a console application that has command line inputs because that's primarily the way, right, you alter the behavior of your program in a console app is by passing things from the command line. So it's helpful to be able to, when you want to debug a particular uh, a particular scenario, to be able to pass in the exact command lines in as part of your debug configuration um, that actually get your application into the state that you want to debug. Now, the program I use in NeoVim to debug things is called NVimDAP, and that's just a plugin that allows you to configure adapters and configurations to basically help debuggers talk to NeoVim, right? Um, and so NVimDAP does support that same launch.json file. Um, it has partial support, doesn't support it completely, but it does have some um, support for it and so i should be able to just reuse this existing launch.json file to have that same experience so that's what i had bought so let me show you what happens um, when i try to do this though so let's go ahead and set a breakpoint here and then i uh, will start debugging and i will pick .NET core launch console because that is the uh, configuration that's coming from my launch.json file now it's going to prompt me for my inputs here, um, which is great. That's exactly what VS Code does too. Um, so let's go ahead and put in this time GitHub. However, this time when I hit enter, you'll see I get an error because whenever NVimDAP was trying to parse my launch.json file, it was expecting this that args parameter to actually be an array and not a string. And that has traditionally been the case when it comes to launch configurations that are provided um, uh, that are provided for a VS Code launch.json file. So traditionally, this piece of configuration in a launch.json file is um, an array. So it would actually be, you know, wrapped like this, 
and then you would specify the different commands that you want to pass in. The problem with doing it this way is it makes it very difficult to dynamically debug aspects of your console application because essentially you'd have to hard code in here the arguments you want to pass. So in this case, I have to hard code GitHub. And then if I wanted to change to, hard, to debug what happens when I pass news, I'd have to change it here. Or let's say I have a much more complex comp console application that has different options and different per, um, options for different arguments, then I'd have to always be coming and updating and changing this file to debug my application in the way I want to debug it. Um, so VS Code actually uh, added an enhancement that allows this args option to actually be a string. Um, and it will handle converting that into actual individual um, arguments to be passed to the command line. However, uh, invimdap doesn't support that. So invimdap is still expecting this to be an array. So the way you get around this is you have to make some modifications to your NeoVim configuration to actually support dealing with this uh, string as an args. So let's go ahead and look at that modification really quick. Um, so if I go over to my back to my shell, um, you can see I'm back in this program. Um, and so what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to leave this exactly the same and just have it play nice with NVIMDAP and NeoVim. So let's go ahead and jump into my configs. So I'll open this up in NeoVim. And I'm going to head to my plugin file. I've got everything configured in my debugging file. And so what I need to do here is I basically need to hook in to some of um, invimdap's functionality and say, hey, when you get a configuration that has this args param, I need you to check and see if it's a string. And if it is a string, I need to convert it into a, or, uh, an array of arguments. So that's what we're gonna define here. So let's go ahead and jump down below our configurations. Let's jump down below some of this .NET specific stuff. Um, and let's go to the where we set up the invimdap listeners. Now, um, I'm going to open up just a reference file so I don't waste your time slowly typing all this out. Um, I made some notes myself. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically declare a function that the function handles converting a string to an array. Um, and invimdap actually provides a nice utility function that makes this much easier. So. We're going to declare a local function and we're going to call it convert arg string to array. And that's going to be equal to a function that we're going to set to, um, or that's going to be equal to a function that takes a config object as its parameter. Um, and I'm getting this, this interface is based on the type of function that you need to pass to a particular hook in MVMDAP. And I'll show you that in just a second. Um, but in this function, this is where we're going to do all that work to figure out, hey, does this config have an args um, property in it? And if it is an args property, is it of type string? And if it is of type string, then we need to do that manipulation. So I'm going to go ahead and do um, what I want to do here. So I'm going to go ahead and say uh, local C. And this is a recommendation that MVMDAP makes whenever you're um, defining a function that manipulates a configuration, you should always make a copy of it so you don't inadvertently uh, mutate things in some way that breaks something else. So then we're gonna loop over this config and we're gonna say pairs vim.deepcopy config, right? So that's where we're making our copy so we don't do something we're gonna regret to our configuration. Um, and then we're gonna do something very similar to what Copilot's suggesting, but not exactly the same. So we're gonna say do end, and then we are gonna return C, and then we are going to, whoops, we are going to end, right? Yeah, we're gonna end down here. Oh, also my JavaScript brain kicked in. I don't need curly braces here, do I? Um, let's see. And we're going to remove that curly brace. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and format. And this should be return C. Yep. 
There we go. Okay, now the real work happens inside of this four, this four block. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say if there's a key in this configuration that is equal to args um, and the type of the, the type of the value is a string, right? Um, because if the type of the value is an arg, then it's fine. And then DAP can handle it. We don't need to modify it. Then what we want to do is we actually want to modify it. And we are going to say require dap.utils.splitster. And then we're going to pass it that string. So the split stir is a helper method that uh, NVimDAP provides to split a string into uh, an array of arguments. And this specifically exists because people wanted to do what I'm trying to do. So that's how I know it exists because I did a lot of sleuthing on, on the interwebs to figure it out. Otherwise, we're just gonna preserve what's already there. Okay, now what we need to do is we actually need to provide this um, this function to uh, invimdap um, basically to hook in to say hey when you have a config when you're when you're essentially when you're loading that configuration right before you actually run the configuration before you actually use it let me modify it so invimdap provides some listeners to do this so if I tap dap.listeners right very similar to how we're hooking up these listeners down below for dap UI now instead we're going to say in, uh, listeners dot on config and then we have to pass in a key right because this this um, on config is a table and so we need to to identify which configuration do we want this callback to run against and in this case I'm just going to run it against my CS configuration um, and then all I'm going to do is say okay when the C, uh, C sharp configuration gets loaded. I want to convert arg string to array. But you could actually have this apply to all of your um, configuration. Actually, let's do that. Let's just apply this to all of my configurations. Because every because you might have a you might have a node script right that has some arg arguments that you want to debug. So let's go ahead and just loop over all of our configs and let's apply it. So we'll say in pairs dap dot configurations do and then we'll say dap dot listeners listeners dot on config and then we'll define the same key that's in the configuration object and then we'll say just set that equal to the convert string to arg array like that right um, now the one thing I want to point out here though is notice uh, if you wanted, if you wanted to, wanted to do something different uh, with the config, uh, you'd have to define it separately. You'd need to define it separate, right? So if you wanted to do something, if you wanted to modify this configuration in some other way, other than just converting the args to a string. Right, you'd probably you'd probably have to pull that config out separately of this loop and define that function. Maybe you still are going to handle converting um, an arg string to an array, um, but if you have extra stuff you want to do, you're going to need to have a kind of a whole completely different function, right? So this is a little bit kind of carte blanche approach, but it should work to demonstrate what I want to do. So with that in place now, NeoVim or NVimDAP now knows how to deal with making sure that if we get an args string, we can convert it into the expected array shape. So let's go ahead and write that out. And write all quit. And hopefully I did this right and I won't make myself look like, a, like an idiot in the video. Um, let's go ahead and quit this all. Let's open in them dap again. Let's go back to program.cs. Let's set a breakpoint. And now let's click DC and we'll do the same thing. We'll launch it again and we'll say GitHub. And now what I'm hoping is we should actually hit that breakpoint, which we did. So we opened up GitHub, which is great. But you can see now I'm actually hitting that breakpoint in NVimDAP. I have my locals over here that I can look at and inspect just like within VS Code. 
Um, and now everything works as I would expect it, the same way I was doing it in VS Code, but now I have the same functionality in NeoVim. And granted, this is a very contrived example, but you can imagine if I had a command line that had a command line tool that had uh, many, many different arguments and each argument has its own set of options, um, it would be pretty painful to always have to update that configuration file every time I wanted to debug it, or that launch file every time I wanted to debug it in a certain way. This way, I can just define that at the time that I debug the program um, dynamically, which is really nice. So if you have need for this, I hope it helps you. I know it took me an evening to kind of sort through how exactly I needed to modify my NeoVim configuration, but hopefully it uh, hopefully it saves you some time. And I'll, I'll post a link to my configuration in the description too.